Now let's move this part of the process where the currency gets converted into a new page and call that page from here using the page stage. In order to do that, I'll create a new page, name it as currency converter and click OK. Then we will delete these two links and cut this entire part and paste it here. Then join the start and end stages. Now go to the main page, drag and drop a page stage and I'll get this new page wizard. I'll select the first option which says create a reference to an existing page and click next. Select the currency converter page and click finish. I'll then link the stages. Now we need to pass the input value from currency and to currency as inputs to the currency converter page and then get back the result as output from the currency converter page. So I'll go to the currency converter page, double click start and start adding the inputs just like we did in our previous videos. Next we will map these three inputs to the three action stages here. I'll double click enter input value, delete this, drag and drop the input value, click OK. I'll do the same for the rest of the two stages. Then I'll go to the click go stage. Replace these two data items with the new data items. And click OK. Finally open the read results stage. Go to the outputs tab. Delete this and create a new data item in this page. And click OK. Now we need to send this result as an output. So we will open the end stage. Add an output, name it as result, and drag and drop the result data item here. Then click OK. Now we will go to the main page, double click currency converter, enter the input value as input collection dot amount, from currency as input collection dot currency. and drag and drop the two currency. I'll then go to the outputs tab and type input collection dot INR and click OK. Now before we run let's see if it works in the ideal scenario so we will go ahead and fix the from currency in application modeler which we modified in the last video. Click application modeler and I'll change this from 11 back to its original value which was 1. Then click OK. Save the object. Close Internet Explorer. I'll go to the Process Studio. Click Refresh. Reset. And Go. Okay, the process got completed and let's see the result. Alright, the results look perfect. Now let's modify the from currency as we did in our last video and then run the process. I'll go to the application modeler and change this value. Click OK. I'll then save the object. Close IE, go to the Process Studio, click Refresh, Reset, and Go.
Okay, so you can see that again, it took the exception path and if you check the exception details, it is the same what we gave in the object. So what we understand here is that when the exception was thrown from the object and as it was not handled, it got transferred one layer up to the currency converter page in the process. Since it is not handled there as well, it got transferred to one more layer up, which is the main page where it was handled and the process ended gracefully. Now this phenomenon of the exception being transferred from the lowest layer up to the highest layer is called bubbling. All right, so let's summarize what we learned about exception until now. A recover stage attracts all the exceptions in that page. An exception will be active only between a recover and a resume stage. Once it passes the resume stage, it will be diffused and the process continues the normal path. By default, the page will only use the first recover stage unless the recover stage is contained inside a block. So any more recover stages we create will be redundant. The exception type value is not an expression, so double quotes are not required. The exception detail is an expression, so double quotes are required. Exception functions like exception detail and exception type can be used only between the recover and resume stage. If an exception is not handled in a page, it will be bubbled up to the upper layers until it reaches the main page. So I hope by now you have a clear understanding on what exceptions are and how to handle them.